Now, not everyone is thankful for the things that they should be thankful for. First Thessalonians 5 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So it's God's will that you be thankful for everything. Now, that's a tall order, maybe. I heard a, a couple that was on a diet, and they were eating steamed green vegetables. And he looked over at his wife and he says, Honey, you say the blessing. If I thank God for this, he'll know I'm lying. <laughs> Sometimes it's tough to be thankful for everything. Isn't it? Luke 17, 17 says, Where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? So there is the tendency always to quickly forget what God's done for you. To let it go and not be grateful. William Law, back in 1686, 1761, he was a former Church of England priest. But he gave it up trying to do the right thing. And that's tough to do. And he taught privately. He wasn't one of the big public people. And his personal integrity, because of what he'd already done giving that priesthood up, and his mystical theological writings that he had, earned him great influence among the evangelicals of his day. He wrote a book called A Serious Call to a Devout and Holy Life. And in that, there's this statement. Would you know who is the greatest saint in the world? That's a good question, isn't it? Would you know who is the greatest saint in the world? It is not he who prays most or fasts most. It is not he who gives most alms. Or is it more eminent for temperance or chastity or justice? But it is he who is always thankful to God who wills everything that God willeth, who receives everything as an instance of God's goodness and has a heart always ready to praise God for it. Wow. Amen. There's an African proverb, an old African proverb that goes like this. I love it. It says, even the hen, we're talking about the chicken hen, you know, even the hen lifts her head toward heaven when swallowing her grain. At Thanksgiving, their uh, junior was so excited because everything on the table was his favorite. And he intended to gorge himself on his favorites. There was green bean casserole. I love the green bean casserole, don't you? Sweet potato casseroles. I love that too. Amen. That's good fattening stuff. Macaroni and cheese. You got to love that. Uh, turkey and dressing with gravy. Amen. Cranberry sauce. What's turkey without cranberry sauce, right? Biscuits. Homemade biscuits. And then there was pumpkin, pecan, and cherry pie and ice cream to put on it. Well, he just ate all he could eat. The only thing, the problem was is five hours later they started gathering and putting all the leftovers on the table to eat again. Well, Junior had just topped out. And he just really wasn't hungry. But it was his favorites. So he led the prayer. He said, what I said a minute ago, Lord, stretch us. <laughs> so Lord, stretch us to be thankful and more positive than uh, some sometimes seem to be. There are always naysayers who look for something to be unhappy about. You've seen them, right? No matter what, they're just unhappy. To the negative, the idea of building uh, our building even now, virtually being under new management, that's just something they don't want to be thankful for. Or the idea of bold leadership, no, that just makes them unset, upset and unhappy because they're not the leader. Ooh. But to the positive, to the positive and the thankful and the heart of a true worshiper, you're just excited like me, amen? Isn't it neat? I, let me give you a scripture. I love this passage. Don't you love this passage? If, if you haven't read it in a while, let me read it for you. It's a little small up there. It says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines. I mean, you don't have any figs, you don't have any fruit. Though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food. Sounds bad, doesn't it? Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. 
I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen? Amen. It's not about my stuff. It's not about the flowers. Amen? It's not about the shrubbery that's missing. It's not about the denuded building that we've got right now. It's got all kinds of stuff missing all over the place. If you look for maybe some of your supplies, they may be gone. I don't know in your Bible classes this morning. It's not about that, and it's not about the building. I praise the Lord that we're a part of a church that suddenly doesn't have a building. Amen? I really do. In 1620, let me give you a reason why. In 16, that's the way real thankful people are. In 1620, 102 pilgrims got off at Plymouth Rock. They'd come here just to worship God freely. That's all they wanted to do, just worship God freely. That year, 56 of the 102 died of either starvation or diseases that they came in contact with they'd never seen before, or just the cold, bitter cold. And in 1621, 46 pilgrims still alive joined with 91 Indians to give God thanks for their harvest and the fact that they were still alive. Oh, you can complain about the 56 are dead, or you can say, thank you, Lord, for what you got. I mean, which way do you lean? Amen. Is it the positive direction or the negative? Let's swim against the tide of negativity, amen? And let's be positive. Run off those negative complaints that are in your head and try to rejoice in the Lord, amen? Not only were we thankful for the new owners, but we are thankful for our bold leadership. I'll tell you something. Bold elders, bold deacons, bold givers, bold teachers, Bold people that will be a part of this transition because this is not going to be easy. But you know what? The timid won't hang around. So I'm looking to the bold, amen? I want to be known as the bold that will do whatever it needs to be done. Uh, in the bold apostles, there's basically three very straightforward lessons that I want to leave with you this morning. And once you get this, this is pretty much it. We're going to basically read the Bible, and I'll just point out a couple of things. Can I do that? Keep it real simple this morning. Here they are. Those are the three lessons. If you want to fill in the blanks, you can get ahead of me, but I ain't going to talk but about one at a time. <laughs> I want you to read again with me and look at being thankful for leaders who are bold builders. Look at verse 9. If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well. Interesting statement, right? Let it be known to you all. I love the boldness in his speech when he says this. If that's what I'm being judged on, let it be known to you all. And to all the people of Israel, just in case nobody in here is the only group, I want everybody to know it, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By him, this man stands here before you whole. What a statement of boldness. Verse 11, this is the stone, I'm talking about Jesus, this is the stone which was rejected by you builders. He, he doesn't just quote the scripture, he applies it. You builders, which has become the chief cornerstone, nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That's Jesus' name, amen. In verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter, and you saw it, didn't you? Boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Leaders who are bold builders not like those builders, initiate their people's building in weakness. Weakness. These men are weak. Look at it. There's the weakness of incredulity where they are basically just stymied that they're being asked this question. If we this day are judged for a good deed, is that what I did wrong? Did I do something wrong by doing something good? Isn't that funny? The weakness of bravery, whom you 
crucified. Now, you point somebody's murder in their face, brace yourself. The weakness of audacity, the stone which was rejected by you builders. Wow, you guys fulfilled that prophecy in Psalm. The weakness of certainty, nor is there salvation in any other. Not only did y'all kill the wrong guy, but he's going to save us, and ain't nobody ever been born that could save us like he could save us. Amen? And then, the weakness of informality. You see, they hadn't been trained. It says they perceived that they were uneducated. You see, if you're a little uneducated, you're a little rough around the gills. Sometimes you say y'all and all kinds of stuff. You know, you just are uneducated around the gills. It's okay. We don't need elders who are erudite in every way. We just need men who will serve the Lord. We don't need teachers who have to be highfalutin. We just need people who love the Lord. The weakness of informality, the weakness of naivety, that they were untrained. You don't have to know and be able to quote the whole Bible to be a good and godly Christian leader. Amen? And then there's the weakness of just being Jesus' student. They realized that they had been with Jesus. Let's, this Thanksgiving, let us thank the Lord for leaders who are not scholars. Now, I'm not trying to insult you elders, but I'm not that impressed with your scholarship, okay? I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to insult you. But leaders who are not scholars or politicians always trying to keep everything just so, you know, if, if everything ain't just so, well, I'm going to leave. Well, okay. That's your, you're cutting the nose off your own face to despite your face. Don't do that. Politicians, they're not that. But who know? I want leaders who know Jesus. Amen? I want Bible class teachers who know Jesus. I don't want to just poke somebody in that class. I want somebody who knows Jesus. Amen? Who loves those kids and loves Jesus. If you don't love Jesus, please quit teaching. Amen? You know, if, if you don't love Jesus, quit being a deacon here. Amen? Love Jesus and are bold believers willing to take some risk and be in a church and be a member of a church that don't own a building. I'm excited. So at Thanksgiving, be thankful for leaders who are bold builders. The second little truth is verse 15 through 30. Thankful for leaders who are bold prayers. Begins in verse 24. So when they heard that, they raised the vo their voice to God with one accord. They heard, don't talk about Jesus anymore. And this is, they immediately go and talk to their people about Jesus. He says, Lord, you are God. Amen to that. You made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why? Did the nations rage? Y'all know this from the Psalms, right? And the people plot vain things. The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly, against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, you remember the Holy Spirit, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness, not that they didn't have it already, but with all boldness, they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Huh. Leaders who are bold prayers substantiate their people's faith in the way they think about God and what they say about God. They talk about God's identity. You are God who made heaven and earth. There's no doubt who we worship here, amen? amen. We worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And then God's perceptivity needs to be pointed out by the mouth of your servant David and said, you said this was gonna happen long ago. Let me tell you something. God knows what's happening in your Monday, in your Tuesday, in your Wednesday, in your Thursday. You go to church Thursday. And then in your Friday, and then in your Saturday, and then in your Sunday, go to church Sunday. 
He knows what's going to happen before you get there. He pointed it out to David. God's sovereignty to do whatever your hand. Lord, I understand your hand is involved in what's going on. What's happening even here right now is not what we're doing. This is God's hand. You look at that property. You know the story of the property, right, Dwight? If you know the story of the property, you know we've got that property by the hand of God. We don't talk about it a lot, but there ain't any doubt about it. You hear the story, you know that was God. We're moving because this is God doing something here. God's hand. Well, that's what he's saying in this prayer. And that's what leaders do. God's sovereignty. And then God's intentionality to do whatever your hand and your purpose. To do whatever you are wanting to do. I don't know what he wants to do. We don't even have the design of the building out in front of you right now. It's not the thing. Abraham went to a place he'd never seen before. Amen. You know, I know some of you nervous. I want to see what I'm getting involved in. Well, we all do, but we'll see it for sure after it's built. Amen. Amen. Amen, Walt. All right. And then God's destiny and it turn, to determine before to be done. That's your purpose, and you determine to do it before. I assure you, God knows what's going to happen. He's not a, just knows what's going to happen. He determined it. Whoa. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then God's creativity, that with all boldness they may speak your word. Folks, I need help because I don't know what I ought to speak and when I ought to speak sometimes. Sometimes I speak when I ought to be quiet, right? And sometimes I'm quiet when I ought to speak. But if God would just light a fire under me when it's time, that's a good thing, right? And then God's ability to stretch out your hand to heal. We've seen so many people blessed here. Amen. The last couple of years. I mean, look, we got uh, stage four hanging around here like they ain't got nothing wrong with them. Amen. And pr praise the Lord for that. Amen. And we, we've got folks, and we're praying for folks all the time. We believe that folks are going to get well. We had an amazing prayer last week, obviously, Leo, and we keep praying for Brother Leo, right? Let us thank the Lord for leaders who believe in prayer and leaders who, and we have elders who do this, that anoint the sick with oil in the name of the Lord and pray for them. Amen. You know why they do that? Not because we're Church of Christ, because we were normal Church of Christ, we wouldn't do that. But we're not normal Church of Christ, obviously. So, it, but fundamentally we do that because it's in the book of James. Amen. Amen. And then they pray weekly for our people. And I don't mean with a nay. I mean they pray for you every single time they meet. You ought to feel blessed because you got a prayer laid over you. Several times. If, especially if you miss church, you get prayed extra. And then <laughs> they prayed hundreds. Our leaders have prayed hundreds of times about this cell in this move. Hundreds of times. So... At Thanksgiving, be thankful for leaders who are bold prayers. And then the last little point is found in verses 31 through 37. We need to be thankful for leaders who are bold growers. Verse 31 says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. I'd be good with that happening, wouldn't y'all? It'd scare me to death, but I'd be good if it happened. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. That's the natural reaction when God's spirit works on you. Verse 32. Now the multitude of the house who believed were of one heart and one soul. Wow. Neither did anyone, not anyone. You know, this is, this is when you know your group sold out. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. Verse 33, And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And with great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds hmm, of the things that were sold. Hmm. Verse 35, And laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each as anyone had need. Leaders who are bold growers motivate their people to develop spirituality. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. 
if, we're, if our Sunday school teachers, if our deacons, if our elders, if our key givers and our leaders behind the scenes are doing anything, people ought to be filled more with the Holy Spirit. Developing your spirituality. And they help develop unity. They were of one heart and one soul. And you find a leader who's not for unity, that ain't a leader. That's a divider. Develop equality. They had all things in common. Amen. Nobody's better than anybody else. Amen. Amen. It don't matter what color you are. And it don't matter how much you paid for your clothes. And it don't matter what you do for a living. We're all even Stephen here. Amen. Amen. And then develop credibility. The apostles gave witness to the resurrection. I'll tell you something. Our, our leaders teach. Every last one of them. And they teach in multiple ways. If you don't know that, you're just ignorant of what they do. And then they develop humility. Great grace was upon them all. Grace only comes to people who are humble. God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud, right? So great grace was upon them all. Why? Because they'd been very humble. And develop, they developed generosity, and that's because of their leadership. They brought the proceeds of the things that were sold, right? $1,157 yesterday, amen? Amen. Y'all know about that, right? Yeah, amen. I know that ain't buying a building, but praise God, it's a part of it, and y'all going to buy that building with three-year pledges coming up. I know you're excited about that. Please be in prayer about that. Fast and pray about that for yourself. Amen. And let God lead you to the number that you might be able to give. Don't let, don't let one of us tell you. You, you. you let God tell you. Amen. And then develop humanity. They distributed to each as anyone had need. We don't need to drop any of our ministries. We need to minister to people. Amen. Amen. This church is not going to stop ministering to people even if we never build the building. Amen? Because that building is not before our ministry. It ever will be, and it cannot be. So let us thank the Lord for leaders who want to grow and will motivate us to give and motivate us to sacrifice and make that vision possible. Not for us, because I'm getting so old, I ain't going to probably get to enjoy it that long. So don't look at me funny. Some of you older than me. So we're going to meet Jesus soon. I'm thinking about my children. I'm thinking about my grandchildren. And I'm thinking about people of, of this community's children and grandchildren for 50 years from now when this church is 100 years old. That's what I'm thinking about. And if you're thinking about, well, I don't know if I want to go to church like that, then you're thinking about you. Get on board with us thinking about those. So at Thanksgiving, be thankful for leaders who are bold growers. So that's the lesson. Bold builders, bold prayers, bold growers. You know, dogs, 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 dogs aren't any kind of creature. Don't buy a dog. But you can get a dog. Dogs bark and growl at anything new and different. Have you noticed that? If it's new and different, what is that? You know. That's what they do. Dogs, are you listening? Bark and growl at anything new and different. Henry Allen, or Harry Ironside, is a Canadian-American Bible teacher, preacher, theologian, author. He is pastor of Moody Church in Chicago from 1929 to 1948. I'll tell you a story about him. He was at a meal. He was just having lunch. And a guy approached him and said, well, can I join you? He said, sure. Pull up chair and sit down. He did. And about that time, Ironside bowed his head in prayer. He did his own prayer. When he raised up, the other man who had sat down next to him says, do you have a headache? He said, no, I don't. Well, is there something wrong with your food? I'm staring at it. And he says, no, I was simply thanking God as I always do before I eat. He said, oh, you're one of them. Well, I want you to know that I never give thanks. I earn my money by the sweat of my brow. 
and I don't have to give thanks to anybody when I eat. I just start right in. And Ironside said, yes, you're just like my dog. That's what he does too. <laughs> Dogs. Good folks learn a long time ago to be positive and thankful and say so, amen? Not like dogs that bark at everything. They're grateful. The owner of a large department store offered a prize of $5,000 many years ago for the best answer to this question. He put it out in advertising. It's kind of an advertising ploy within and of itself. But the question was, how can my business be most speedily and surely improved? Right? How can I improve my business? Ask anybody that wants to throw it in, and the best suggestion is going to get $5,000. Any of y'all's business want to do that, I'll gladly join in, you know, just to help you out. <laughs> Roy McCardle is the one who received the check for the $5,000, right? And he simply wrote on a postcard these words. Tell your clerks to say, thank you. Thank you. Doesn't hurt, does it? Can you say it? Try it with me. Thank you. Yeah. So turn to the people who are doing good things. You got a Bible class teacher and you drop your kids off there. Why don't you sometimes go, thank you. Let's try it again. Say it with me. Thank you. Yeah. And, and if you walk up to a deacon who's helping get stuff arranged around here, you know, you walk up to him and just say, thank you. Let's try it out again. Thank you. Hey, you can do it. How about if you walk up to an elder and you realize that they're spending time up here when you're not around, and you just walk up to them and say, thank you. That's right. And the people who've done all this work around here that you don't know anything about, like Jim Adair, and the ladies who worked out there to get rid of that junk, I mean, that good stuff that y'all gave, and you just walk up to them and say, thank you. Amen. And it doesn't hurt you, does it? Amen. There's a different kind of thank you. There's a thank you, you know, that we, that ornate one, we do it Thanksgiving. But how about this Thanksgiving? You remember to thank God for the new owners, for the bold leaders, and we'll talk more about worship next week. But if you're not right with God, be bold. Amen. Be bold. And if you're not right, you need to believe the gospel, repent of your sins, confess the name of Christ, be baptized, be bold enough to take those steps. I haven't taught that this morning, but if you'll be bold, We'll help you be that through that process and get you right with God. So if you need to get right, come and we'll do anything and everything we can at the, at the close of this invitation. Won't you come right now? Be bold while we stand and while we sing.